Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Andrew Trepin. I am a professional software engineer, and I was uh, playing with Nixos. Uh, it's operating system based on Nix Package Manager, and uh, came up with interesting approach uh, for configuring Emacs, and I want to share it with you. Uh, I will start with a bold statement that Emacs configuration is almost the same as system configuration. And it's not related to a uh, famous joke about Emacs being operating system. It's more about uh, Emacs being integrated with uh, so many tools inside the environment. Uh, for example, if you don't even use any fancy workflows, you use only plain Emacs without any configuration. Uh, Dirt uses LS, uh, grep EL uses grep. Uh, info uh, files are placed somewhere in your uh, system and uh, also your Emacs uh, can interact with GPG, JIT, Make and other stuff. And uh, when you grow your uh, Emacs Lisp uh, init.el file or other files in your Emacs D directory, uh, you get much more integration with underlying operating system. And the question is uh, how uh, to manage such configuration. Because uh, you can't uh, just take a bunch of EL files and move it to a different machine and uh, be sure that everything will work. Because uh, you didn't move your uh, executables, you didn't move configuration of other programs, uh, you didn't move your service configurations. Uh, and uh, you can't even just uh, create dot files for each program and move it with your EL files. Uh, the approach should be a little broader. Uh, everything that I will be showing today is available on GitHub uh, and uh, any source code you can find here. Uh, but my uh, copy of the repository uh, is on my local machine. Uh, and as you can see, the font is a little uh, small. And also my terminal font is also a little small and uh, I can do a quick fix and uh, increase the font. But uh, imagine how cool it, it will be if you can open uh, a file which contains the configuration for a system. You change some value here, for example, font size uh, and run some comment uh, and uh, based on this file and some other inputs, a uh, new operating system is built and all your uh, environment is set up uh, and ready for use. And for example, here, uh, we already built a new operating system and everything uh, is already installed in my uh, SSD. And now I can run the program and you can see that uh, my uh, Alacrity terminal has much bigger font and also if I restart my Emacs instance, it's by default uses much bigger font for any buffer. Uh, pretty cool. And as you can see, it's already working uh, thanks to Nix and uh, Nixos. Uh, I will explain a little later how it uh, works inside. But uh, for now, let's uh, specify a little more uh, what is uh, what happened right now? Uh, I had my oh doesn't work the way I want. Uh, I have my whole operating system uh, defined in few uh, Nix files, and for example, here you saw the file which defines some variables uh, for my environment, and there are a few more files for as different programs. And there are uh, a folder which contains all Emacs related configuration. And also there are uh, package definitions defined in Nix package repositories, uh, which uh, is also input uh, for the function which generates, generates the operating system. And uh, getting all my configurations written in Nix language and a uh, few files uh, in other languages, uh, everything is uh, gathered together and uh, from that inputs and only from that inputs, 
the new operating system is built. And Emacs now is a part of this operating system. And I can distribute uh, this uh, Emacs configuration with all the environment that I want. Uh, pretty cool so far. And uh, let's clarify which problems does it solve. First of all, the integration, integration problem. For example, a uh, few minutes ago, you saw that I changed one variable. And uh, there was two updates, first one for my terminal and the second one for my Emacs. Uh, and uh, it's pretty good that a uh, few different programs can share uh, some data. Uh, for example, you can have one them for every application or something like that. And you change only one value in one place and the whole your operating system is updated. Uh, also another um, often problem is reproducibility. For example, um, when you install your new instance of Emacs on your laptop or something like uh, that, you can be sure that you will get the same package versions and you can be sure that your configuration will work on those new updated uh, or newly installed packages. Also, if you uh, update uh, packages, uh, sometimes it's hard to revert because uh, it's the way uh, your package manager uh, almost uh, every time works. You're just getting the latest available packages. And if they broken, you need uh, to wait a maintainer to update them. And also uh, your basic max configuration uh, almost uh, always doesn't contain any native dependencies like uh, executables or uh, something else. Recently, I saw some attempts to make it possible to use use package for those needs, uh, like ensure native dependencies or something like that. Uh, and it's obviously if your configuration isn't reproducible and you uh, doesn't have your whole environment uh, placed in one uh, repository, uh, it's very hard to share such configuration. You can uh, share part of your configuration and some instruction to how uh, to get the similar environment, but it uh, doesn't always work. And uh, let's go closer to actually Emacs configuration itself. Uh, I had uh, some uh, experience with Space Max and Doom Emacs distributions. I also uh, watched a lot of uh, videos and articles by Protosilos and uh, a lot of other custom configurations of many different cool people. Uh, and also, uh, I was inspired by uh, Use Package package uh, and uh, decided uh, that I will create the following structure for my uh, Emacs uh, configuration. I will be using subconfigs. Uh, it's almost the same as layers in Space Emacs or models in Doom Emacs, which are self-contained. Uh, they contain uh, Emacs Lisp code, which configures all the packages necessary for this uh, part of configuration. Uh, it contains all dependencies, Emacs dependencies like Emacs packages. It contains all native dependencies like binaries or maybe info pages or something like that. Uh, it also contains uh, variables that uh, can be shared between Emacs and other applications. And uh, it can contain service or system definitions, which configure your systemd uh, service or something like that that you use in your workflow. For example, for synchronizing your mails. And uh, let's start from first example that, uh, oops that I already uh, covered a little. I have following structure for my configuration. I have uh, some files here. And uh, early init is uh, just placed as it is. Uh, nothing changes. It just, uh, it, it will be copied to the uh, Emacsd directory later uh, with some exceptions that it will be placed in Nick store and Simlink will be created to it. Uh, I have uh, use package init uh, el. It's a, a part of configuration that uh, will be on top uh, of everything uh, to be able to use uh, use package in my sub configurations. And 
uh, actually some Nix code to glue everything up uh, and our configs, uh, dears, which contains all my subconfigs. Uh, and let's start from faces subconfig. Uh, and let's start from config el, which uh, can be familiar for many people. It just use package definition for faces package uh, and some configuration for it, which setting uh, some attributes. And it reads uh, some variables. Those variables actually defined uh, in a different place. And uh, if I open default Nix file, you can see that uh, it contains the definition of subconfig. Uh, and also it should contain a definition of variables that it, uh, that, uh, it uses by, uh, I forgot to move it from my original default Nix file somewhere here. You probably can't uh, find a definition of those variables. Uh, just right here, I took values from my uh, Nix expressions and those values uh, will be shared across uh, my alacrity and uh, across uh, Emacs and other applications. And later they will be placed in generated Emacs configuration and uh, they will be available for faces subconfig. And here I will be referencing them just like Emacs variables. Uh, let's take a look at another more complicated example. For example, our Chrome package. Uh, just a basic use package configuration which uses uh, another variable and the definition. Uh, it's a little more comp complex than the previous one. Uh, Elisp configuration in the same file. Uh, Emacs uh, packages uh, specified here, just two packages, or Chrome and company or Chrome. System packages, uh, it's uh, something that should be available on your host operating system. And uh, for Emacs packages, uh, you need circulate package. And uh, also the def definition of the variable, which will be passed uh, in my Emacs configuration later. Uh, and it's equal to my work dir, which is defined in my environment and uh, subdirectory of it. Um, Andrew, you have about five minutes, including questions. Oh, uh, okay. I, I almost finished. Uh, it was the uh, uh, last example. Uh, <laughs> let me open my org file. Okay. Uh, right here. Uh, I won't give you introduction to Nix itself and underlying uh, uh, mechanism, uh, but uh, I can say that uh, they already proof of concept uh, of uh, framework for uh, utilizing Nix and Nixos for configuring QAMAX and making very complex workflows reproducible on uh, other machines. Uh, it gives everything that uh, we saw right now. And for the future work, uh, I plan to re-implement uh, re it in uh, Guile, uh, which is a scheme dialect, which is uh, another Lisp language uh, for GNU uh, Geeks operating system, uh, because I like uh, Lisp languages a little more than uh, Nix languages. And I want to make uh, this project from proof of concept to some state which will be user-friendly and uh, available for other people. And uh, if I will have a lot of time, I will make an operating system uh, which will be inspired by Lisp machine to make the whole experience uh, very Lispy. Uh, thank you for your attention. And now I will answer your questions, I see. You are now unmuted. Oh, uh, there's a lot of... Hmm. Okay, uh, I see the questions. Uh, do you deal with config files such as Emacs custom EL, some which uh, have sensitive data? Uh, I deal in the following way. I create a, a separate directory called uh, local share Emacs, and I place custom EL file here, and it's not synchronized in any way, and it, it will be just lost in case you move to another machine. Uh, and I do it for purpose because I don't use custom EL. 
uh, and uh, it's hard to make it reproducible if you're using uh, such mechanism as custom EL. Uh, how do you learn Nix language basics? Just from the manual. Uh, I read a lot of documentation. Also, I saw the course uh, like learning Nix in 15 minutes. And also there was another resource. Uh, but better to ask this question in uh, Nix or Nixos uh, channel in IRC, which will be um, treated in more details. Uh, what are the main advantages besides uh, switching computers, uh, which most people rarely do? Uh, for example, uh, the original idea was to make uh, part of configurations available uh, for project. For example, you have some project, you made the setup and want as developers to use the same uh, setup on the machine, but uh, you implement only the part of setup, like one sub config. Uh, especially for this language, for this project. And you, uh, with such approach, you can easily share such uh, subconfig with other people. Uh, have you tried Geeks in place of Nix? Uh, yes, I tried it. And currently I'm uh, in state of switching from Nix to Geeks. And you can uh, follow my uh, YouTube channel, I think. Uh, I do... Uh, streams twice uh, in a month and uh, talking about reproducibility and related stuff. And probably soon I will be talking about installation of gigs and configuration of it. And uh, in case you're watching this video later, you can find me somewhere on network using those contacts. It's my nickname and my email address. Awesome. I think we wrap it up just on time. Yep. Uh... Thank you so much, Andrew, for your great talk and uh, for hanging out to answer the questions live. Uh, thank you for organizing the conference and thank you for all participants for questions and participation. And see you soon. Cheers. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.